Our sermon scripture this morning is a very well-known one. It's a Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Shall I pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. We are asking you to pour your spirit each every one here in this room so we can understand your word and apply it to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, last Friday, I drove my family to the Denver airport. And usually my two boys were on their phone. But this time I told them, you know, let's be quiet and look to the sky okay, for the next one hour. Then Logan said, what am I going to do, Daddy? I said, look to the sky and think about your life. And he said, what is that? Thinking about my life. I said, just think about what you need to do to make your life better. Okay? As you know, Logan is fourth grader. Then he told me, oh, if you give me my phone back, you make my life better. <laughs> now, no matter how smart your children are, no matter you know, how physically tall they are, I think it is too early for children to understand what their life's all about. Your kids might be genius, so they can read you know, a few books overnight and memorize them all, but I don't think that they can learn, the, they can learn, learn the reality of their lives and learn about who they are and what their life is going toward. It's too early for them to understand. According to my own experience, if you, if you want to learn about the real of your life, you have to go through many ups and downs. Sometimes you have a sadness, brokenness, joyfulness, and excitement. When you go through all those events in your life, and you can get a glimpse of, oh, this is life is about. Now, Socrates says, know yourself. Know yourself is about know your life. But Socrates didn't really want to say know your life. What he, tra- what he tried to say is, you cannot understand your life at your young age. Socrates was teaching his young uh, disciples about philosophy, and he said, you cannot understand your life at your young age. You have to go through your life step by step, experience many things. Colin O'Brady is 33 years old, and he is the first person who travels across Antarctica. Am I right, my pronunciation? Antarctica? Right next to North Pole? I'm sorry, my pronunciation. He's the first person who went through 965 miles by himself. He was alone, unsupported, unaided by any help to go through the long distance, all by himself. Here to Denver, how many miles? 230 miles? Think about you walk through the, the average minus 23 temperature 
you know, cold weather, and you know, gust of wind, and snowstorm. But he went through 936 miles by himself without any help. He started his journey November 3rd and finished December 26th, right after Christmas. He says this during his interview. This is exactly what he said. He said, I'm no longer the same person I was when I left on the journey. I suffered, being deadly afraid, cold, and alone. I laughed and danced and cried tears of joy. I didn't think about how and when I can finish. I just did everything step by step. Then I realized I was already at the finish line. I don't know if Colin is a Christian or not, but I think this is the attitude we need to walk through this brand new 2019. Looking at the scripture, especially Psalm 23, we can see that the David went through many ups and downs, step by step, and one by one, without knowing what's going to happen next. You might think that, oh, David already knows that he's going to be the, he's going to be the king of Israel. You know, he knows what to do, he knows where to go. You know, that's from our perspective. Because we read the scripture already, we know the, all the accounts of what he did and where he went. So we see his life from the beginning to the end. But David doesn't know anything about his life except one thing. He's ordained by the prophet Samuel and he is going to be the king. That's the thing he, he knows. Other than that, he has no idea where he needs to go, what he needs to do. It took about 15 years for him to be the king of south part of Judah. You know, it is one Israel, but still it is one Israel, but there are a lot of tribes in the Israel, so it's not really one unified country. There are 12 different tribes. The David has, uh, has to uh, unite all the tribes. So it took about 15 years for him to, for, to be the king of south part of Israel. Then another five years before he is king over all Israel. So it took about no, seven years. So 15 years and seven years, so total 22 years he has to go through all those ups and downs. First of all, he was left alone. Then he had to run away from his own king. He became a fugitive from his own country and from others' enemy. He couldn't even go to his father's house because his enemies are waiting everywhere. One time, he has to pretend to be a madman by drawing his saliva down on his beard. I'm going to read the scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10. I'm going to read just little by little. David rose and fled that, that day from Saul he went to King Achish of Gath. The servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of him in dances? Then verse 11, David took these words to her and was very much afraid of King Achish of Gath, so he changed his behavior before them. He pretended to be mad when in their presence, he scratches marks on the doors of the gate, let his spittle run down his beard. 
This is the king elect. He still remembers the oil coming down back of his head. Then now here, pretend to be a crazy man to survive. Did he expect this? Did he plan to be madman? Did he plan to be humble, humiliated before other enemies? He has to go through all those ups and downs, but he doesn't know where he has to go. In the scripture, there are many cases that God blindfolds his people and leads them to the way they, they need to go. First of all, uh, Abraham, Abraham and his, his, his wife Sarah, it took 22 years for them to have Isaac. 22 years. How about Jacob? He was in prison for two years. You might say uh, two years to 22 years, uh, two, two years to short. If you don't know when you are going to be released, from the jail. Two years is a long period of time. How about Noah? He building the ark, but he doesn't know what's going to happen to him. Isaac, he took a long journey to find his wife. Moses, it took 40 years to walk around the desert. He doesn't know where he is going to fulfill God's purpose for his life. All those years, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Noah, they have to be spontaneous and creative and adaptative because they don't know when God's promise will fulfill in their lives. So they have to take step by step for their lives. Psalm 23 is a well-known psalm. I think it's the most famous scripture that everyone, even though they are not Christian, they know this psalm. Scholar says, David probably wrote this psalm in later his life because we can see the fullness of joyful lives. They can be accumulated after we go through many ups and downs. We see fear, we see peace, there is a surrender, and there is a confidence. It's the essence of human life. I think David is the only person who is qualified to write Psalm 23. But his life is like that. He was left alone, he became king, he got kicked out. He became, he pretended to be crazy. So he went through many things. So now he understands what his life is about as a follower of God. I walked through the darkest valley. He said, I walked through darkest valley. What is the darkest valley? It's the valley of death. It's the place of death. The darkest valley is the, the moment that you want to give up. It's a time that you feel like your life is ended right there. It's, 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 it's the place that you are nobody. You have no place to be there. It's totally you are nothing. You're hopeless. Your life is no future. That's the darkest of valley. Lord is my shepherd. Lord is my shepherd. Back in those days, Old Testament, God is the King of kings and Lord of the lords. Where did he get the idea that God is my shepherd? We, we, we understand God is my shepherd because we see in a, many accounts of the scripture in the New Testament, you are sheep, God is my shepherd. But the Old Testament, among all the authors, David is the only one who expressed, the uses the expression that God is my shepherd. Galileo Galilee says, the earth is round. People got mad. Even religious leaders think, it's a crazy, it's a cycle. 
The earth is not round, all is just flat. That's what they think. When David wrote the expression, Lord is my shepherd, people might think, what in the world, Lord is my shepherd? God is with me. I walk through the darkest valley because God is with me. God is with us in the midst of our sadness, midst of the darkness. How come God is with us when I'm hopeless? If God is there, why all those innocent children suffer and hungry? If God is with me, how come my car broke in two? I lost my credit card and my driver license. If God is with me, how come I'm, I'm going to lose my job? How come my wife is leaving me? How come God is with me when I am go through this suffering and pain? Then David said, my cup overflows. Cup overflows to joyful life. My life is full of joy because God anointed me with oil. Oil means God's providence. His promise. His covenant. God's providence. God's will. His purpose is with me. So my life is joyful. Not because I'm in a, my life is full of joyful event, but God's providence. His covenant, His promise is with me, so my life is joyful. And David said, I walk through the darkest valley. Walk through my life step by step. David doesn't say, I'm going to run through the darkest valley. I'm going to ride a horse through the darkest valley. He said, walk. It's hard to understand when you just read the English scripture. But when you read the Hebrew Bible, walk is not just walk. All right? The Hebrew Bible, walk means it's like you walk through the most uh, beautiful forest on the Rocky Mountain. What are you going to do? You're not going to just walk looking at the ground. You just walk, stop, look at the tree. Look at the listening to the bird, look at the clouds, the river. You enjoy all those beautiful scenery. That's walk here. David said, I walk through the darkest valley. I'm in the midst of desperation, sadness, and suffering, but I'm not gonna run. I'm not gonna ride a horse. I just gonna walk, enjoy my life take step by step to go through all those uh, events. <clears throat> you know, when I talk about step by step, I always remember my first year in college. That was you know, 22 years ago. My major was the philosophy of religion. Can you believe that? Philosophy of religion, lots of readings, difficult vocabulary, one day, you know, I had to have a presentation to all the students. The Plato, the philosopher Plato, but I was so nervous that I couldn't even pronounce Plato. So I pronounced tomato. <laughs> tomato said this, you know, these are tomatoes in the comment. <laughs> then after the presentation, my professor said, oh, I didn't know Plato, Plato loved tomato. Four years program, when I took the class, the first exam, I got 40% out of 100%. Other students got at least 90%. I'm the only one who got 40%. <laughs> I was thinking, can I make it? Four years, philosophy major, can I finish this major? I just study hard without thinking anything. In about two and a half years, my school advisor uh, asked me to come to his office and he asked me, Jay, uh, what are you going to do after graduating? I said, graduating? I have a long way to go. He said, no, you almost finished. You took all the classes right now. I was thinking, oh, really? 
I'm already done. So I look at my schedule. So I'm already done in two and a half years. I didn't plan to finish my uh, major, my major within two and a half years. I just took the class one by one, wrote the paper one by one. Then I realized I am already here, the finish line. My doctoral degree in Denver. Next week, I mean this week, is my last class. Can you believe that? Two years, the five years program. I finish within two years. I'm telling you I'm such a smart person, okay? <laughs> Ronald Reagan said, don't try to go beyond what you are able to do, okay? Just do your best every single day, then you see yourself, you are already go beyond what you are able to do. That's the attitude we have. Someone might say, oh, you know, take your life step by step. That's pretty much reckless, careless. You need to make a plan. You need to have a clear purpose and resolution. Think about all the events happened last year, 2018. All the ups and downs, sadness, you know, bliss, excitement, you know, frustration, all the events. How many of those did you really plan to have that? How many of those ups and downs did you experience? Did you schedule? Maybe one or two? Whatever happens in our lives, if this is our faith, we have to take it as God's providence. God has something from our, from our lives. Everything happening in our lives is designed by the Lord, orchestrated by the Lord. That's how we walk step by step, go through all those heartbreaking moments. That when you do, at the end of this year, you realize, huh, I'm already go beyond what I am able to do. I'm about to accomplish most the high peak of our lives. That's the attitude we have for 2019. First Sunday, we have about 20 or 51 Sundays to go. Each Sunday, let's have a new mindset. Mindset that God has a good things in store for our lives. No matter what happens in our lives, that's God's plan. God never intends to harm you, never intends to bring up bad things into your life. Whatever happens to your life, God has a purpose to train you, make you strong in your faith. He's trying to make you the person who you need to be. But then why doesn't God tell us all those events that you know, we have to go through? Look at the Israel people in the Old Testament, 40 years, how many miracles God showed them? They didn't understand all those events, even though God showed a miracle. Fire, then cloud, God fed them, still they betrayed the Lord. God blind us. That's a blessing. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know where we need to go. That's God's blessing. We just close our eyes, trust in the Lord, and walk step by step. That's your faith. That's your true trust. So 2019, at the end of 2019, I hope that all of us were blessed by the Lord and said, Hey, Jay, I accomplished these great things because I trust the Lord. I believe in God's providence and His authority. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, if this is your plan, your purpose, that we have to go through all those heartbreaking moments, help us to be strong, Lord. Help us trust in you, rely on you. Help us not look at any other resources, but you, you are the Lord. 
We are not able to do anything without you, Lord. You should give us your strength, wisdom, and knowledge so we are able to handle and manage our lives. We have lots of bills to pay. We have a relational problem. We have a kid problem. We have, a, I have, to, finish, we have to finish all the assignments for school. Father, strengthen us, be with us, and help us. And walk all those through step by step, one by one, trusting your providence, authority, and power. In your name we pray. Amen.